The EU summit tomorrow and Friday is being billed as one of the most crucial in the EU's history. Europe is desperate to avoid a rerun of the 2007-2008 credit crunch. To discuss why this summit is being called a make or break for the Eurozone, I spoke to Nigel Farage, a member of the European Parliament and the leader of the UK Independence Party. Well, funnily enough, this is the eighth summit this year at which we've been told the summit is to save the euro and it's make or break. So, so I think we should be a little bit cautious um, about that. Uh, we, you know, we heard um, six weeks to save the euro and that's expired, 10 days to save the euro and that expires this Friday. So, so you know, take that with a pinch of salt. However, what is without doubt is that the world global markets increasingly are losing confidence in the ability, not just of Greece and Portugal and Ireland to service their debts, but also of much bigger economies such as Spain and Italy too. So I'm not for a moment saying uh, that, that, that things aren't serious, um, but I don't necessarily think things have to be resolved this weekend. Now, how does this new Franco-German proposal for the Eurozone affect the possibility of a second bailout plan for Greece as agreed on October the 26th? Uh, what it means is that um, you know, the bailout plan, as agreed, will continue. However, uh, there is no prospect um, under this proposal of the European Central Bank effectively reflating the Eurozone economy. And what it means is that you now have to accept grinding austerity measures for several years to come uh, while staying part of the Eurozone. And I think that this proposal is simply the worst possible thing that could happen to your economy and to your country. You have challenged the role of EU leadership by saying that they have no democratic legitimacy. Does this new plan augur even less democracy uh, and a further curtailment of national sovereignty? Oh, I think it's terrifying. I mean, I think the, the cool yet sinister way in which not only have they removed your prime minister, um, but they are now taking control over what you may or may not do. And if you don't obey absolutely everything they tell you to do, there are two things they can do to you. One is they can withhold funds, but two, um, they have a mechanism where they can come and fine you. Now, I mean, quite how they're going to do that hasn't yet been made clear. Um, but this really is a, a union that now appears to be moving towards economic governance without an iota of democracy at all. You have been quoted as saying that Greece should be allowed to default. Why has this not been allowed? Because, and I asked Angela Merkel this question personally, because she said if Greece leaves the Eurozone, that will start to ask questions about the other countries too. And so what would happen, or what they fear would happen, is that their grand political project, which is to build a United States of Europe, would begin to founder. So you, as a country, have to be driven into depression, mass unemployment, and probably serious um, social and civil problems too, um, because, you know, their plan must be saved, and that's what it's all about. How would a default benefit the Greek nation? Look, in the short term, in the short term, all defaults are unpleasant. That, you know, they're unpleasant for the people that have lent money to Greece because they're going to have to take losses. They are uh, difficult because in terms of future credit worthiness and everything else, it may be a long time before you can borrow money again. Uh, and, and, you know, it may well be that the first few weeks or months would be difficult. But, 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 what you would have is a substantial devaluation um, if you return to the drachma, uh, you would become competitive again. Uh, you would attract, well, you know, we'd all come on holiday to Greece. We wouldn't go to Turkey anymore or anywhere else because you would suddenly be tremendous value for money. Um, and I'm not for a moment suggesting that Greece doesn't need to get its house in order and that it doesn't need austerity cuts. It does, but it needs the compensation of a devalued currency. And, and if you look at Iceland, Iceland three years ago defaulted. Um, its currency collapsed. In the short term, its interest rates went up. But three years on, we now see the Icelandic economy having stabilized and getting back to growth. There are those that accuse you of being a Eurosceptic. How do you respond to this accusation? Oh, I'm not skeptical. I mean, skeptical implies 
that I'm doubtful about the European project. I am not sceptical at all. I am an outright opponent of this EU project. The attempt to take all these different peoples and all these different economies and to force them under one umbrella governed by undemocratic bureaucrats is something that I'm fighting against. How would you and your party like to see the future of Europe? I'd like to see a Europe of independent, sovereign nation-states cooperating together, trading together, being friends and good neighbours together, but not being governed by Herman Van Rompuy and Mr. Brosek.